This video is going to show you how to accomplish some tasks on your hard disk that will help maintain the health of your hard disk and possibly also speed up your computer. We're running Windows 7 here. The procedure is very much the same on Windows 2000, Windows Vista, and Windows XP. For Windows 8, a lot of this is automated and you don't need to do it, although you can do it manually if you just want to make sure that everything's working properly. So for Windows 2000, Windows Vista, Windows XP and Windows 7, we're going to go down to the Start area, left click, right click on either computer or my computer, depending on your operating system. That will pop up this window here. And we're looking for the representation of the drive that has your operating system on it. In this case, OS stands for operating system and C is the drive. So I'm going to left click over here to select that. Just one gentle left click is all it takes. If you click too much, you'll find that it goes into editing mode and want you to change the name of the drive. Simply click one more time and that'll stop that. If you double click, then that'll actually move down into the drive and you'll end up with something that looks like this. And that's not what we want to do. So you have a couple of options here. Either close it by using the X and start over from scratch, or in Windows 7 you can just click the back button here and we'll be right back where we are. So whatever you're comfortable with. But generally speaking, if you just gently left click on this area right here once to select the drive, then you won't have a problem. Once your window looks like mine does here, we're going to right click, select properties. You're going to get the menus for properties. It shows disk space available and a variety of other things. First thing we're going to focus on is disk cleanup. I would encourage you not to use compress this drive to save disk space unless you are really, really running out of disk space and there's simply no files that you can get rid of. So we're going to look at disk cleanup, and the system is going to calculate how much can be removed to save some space. And it looks like we can get rid of about 254 megabytes, but let's look at this and see if we can add some more to it. Offline web pages we don't need, recycle bin we don't need, setup log files I like to keep, so leave setup log files unchecked, temporary files we can definitely get rid of, and per user archive Windows error reporting we can definitely get rid of. So you want yours to look like this, where the only one that's not selected is Setup Log Files. Then we're going to click OK. And it'll ask you, do you want to permanently delete the files? And you're going to click Delete the Files. And it's going to go off and start doing them. And this may take a little while, depends on the last time you ran it. There are other utilities that will do this for you and do many other things as well. CC Cleaner, Advanced System Care, and there's probably a hundred different applications you can buy that do the same thing. One thing to be aware of if you're using those other applications that you've downloaded, if you haven't bought the paid for version, you're only getting about 30% of the capabilities of that tool. So you may think you're getting 100% and you're getting it for free, you're not. And so if you're going to use something like Advanced System Care or CC Cleaner or something else that you downloaded, you literally need to go to the extra step and pay the $15, $20 to register and get the full version to get the full benefit because otherwise you're not getting the full benefit of the tool. Okay, so that's disk cleanup. So we brought back some disk space that was not being used effectively. And now we're going to go to tools. And one thing you want to do, and you should do this monthly, is check the drive for errors. So we're going to do check now. And what you want to do is scan for an attempt recovery of bad sectors. Drives are broken up into sectors, and occasionally sectors can go bad. So what you want your computer to do is to go through and look for them, and then any files that it finds in them, and there's typically a lot of duplication in your file system, so you're not in danger of losing anything, but it's good to get rid of these bad areas in case something does go wrong further down the line. Now if you click Start here, you're going to get this message, Windows can't check the disk while it's in use. Do you want to check the hard disk for hard disk errors the next time you start the computer? And you click left click on schedule disk check. Now what that means is the next time you start your computer, it's going to take anywhere up to about a half an hour for the computer to be ready to be used. So you definitely want to, don't want to do this the night before you've got a big meeting in the morning and you need your computer up and running fast. Do it at a time when you can bring up your computer and let it sit there and work for half an hour to an hour.
The other thing we're going to look at now is defragment. Defragment helps bring files together that have been spread out throughout your system to put them in concurrent segments to make them easier for your applications and other computer-based activities to find them. Okay, so one of the things you'll find in Windows 7 is that it has a configure schedule. So I'm running this automatically all the time, which means that my drives are 0% fragmented. I also have an external USB drive I use for backup. Now, sometimes Microsoft schedules these activities for very early in the morning, like 3 a.m., and I have no idea why they do that, because a lot of people simply don't leave their computers on at night. So you want to go in and configure a schedule where your computer's going to be turned on, but you're not necessarily running it. Let me cancel this and move this window back so you can see it a little bit more. And then we'll click on, left click on configure schedule. I had to click on it twice for some reason there. Weekly is fine. Any day of the week is fine. I pick 7 o'clock because we're typically doing dinner or something else around 7 o'clock, so my computer is unlikely to be being used. Select this. I want all my disks to be defragmented and automatically defragmented defragment any new disks that I add to the machine. So because we haven't changed anything, we're just going to click Cancel here. And we're going to click uh, Cancel here because we haven't changed anything here as well. You don't need to do Analyze Disk. If this disk was showing up as being fragmented, in other words, this number was something around 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent or more, then you would definitely want to run Defragment Disk right now. And it'll take anywhere from an hour to two. So you don't want to do it if you're going to be needing to use your computer right away. Although the fragmentation utility is smart enough to slow down or stop while you're using your computer, but it just delays the process. So generally speaking, you want to do defragment at a time when the computer is simply just not going to be being used. And once the defragment process has completed, it will indicate that the process is over and give you options for closing all of the windows. I don't want to run the defragment process right now, number one, because there is no fragmentation to take care of, and number two, because it would make this video unnecessarily long. So I'm just going to close this at this point. I will say that if you have any questions or concerns about doing defrag, please do come into the St. George Senior Citizen Center Computer Lab Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 11.30. Bring your computer, and we're more than happy to help you sort out any issues with regards to your hard disk in terms of defragmenting, checking for errors or other things. One caveat, we do not do virus removal and we do not do operating system installations. This concludes this video.